Hi folks, I hope everybody's doing good today. If I start getting a little wheezy and maybe clear my throat, um, I've been struggling all week. I've had what uh, we call here in Michigan um, just a winter cold, <laughs> uh, cold and sniffles. Um, I was tested twice for Omicron. Uh, both of them came up negative. But um, I just got back from the doctors, and we got to be careful because with my immune system being a little challenged with the chemo, um, I don't want to catch any pneumonia, which would complicate a lot of things. But anyway, I got back from the doctor about 2 o'clock, um, and I started working on a knife that I wanted to carry, um, wanted to carry real bad. So you guys are going to witness the, what I call, changing of the guard, where I just switch my, um, um, my traditional pocket knife carry. Uh, I also picked up this uh, last week, and this has kind of been my left pocket carry. And this is just a uh, budget knife off of Amazon. But it's pretty cool. It's got the... Uh, the bootleg axis lock. Whoops. There we go. D2 steel. 30 bucks. ST110 D2. With a brown burlap micarta. <coughs> there, here it comes. And also if you hear the, the um, a neighbor in the background blasting his stereo. I think he's uh, finally went out and got something to irritate me because my stereo kind of blows his shingles off his roof. So you may hear a little vibration, but, you know, <clears throat> if I kicked my stereo out and he was doing a video at his house, it would be like his video would look like this with my subwoofers. So, you know, I got, I got to give the guy his due. At least he's trying. But he's got a long way to catch up to my uh, roof rooftop uh, accelerator stereo. But, okay, anyway. So, where was I? 2 o'clock, I got home from the doctor. Feeling pretty good. I probably should have started sending out some stickers. And this is what I mean when I feel like I'm swamped because I got so much to do. But um, instead of sending out sti stickers, sorry guys, I worked on this. And this I picked up when I was in the hospital. Um, this is a queen anywhere from a 1932 to a 1955 queen, which was actually made in the Shatton Morgan building when Queen bought that after Shatton Morgan went um, bankrupt. But that's, <clears throat> I don't want to give too much away on that because that's another, that's another, um, I know uh, Papa Bear over there, uh, Patty, uh, across the pond, it's been waiting for me to do my Shatton Morgan story. And um, <clears throat> that's part of, uh, uh, part of the story is the, the relationship between Queen and Shat and Morgan. Now, this is the first, why I say it was made in the Shat and Morgan building was the highly collectible vintage Queen knives are the Queen steel. Um, or, yeah, Queen City. Not, not Queen steel, Queen City. And those were made in a barn down the street from the Shatton Morgan from the Shatton Morgan building and behind the Titusville High School. And that'll all be in that when I do the Shatton Morgan story. <coughs> wow, I'm getting winded. Um Yeah, it's, I'm still trying to get over this cold. Uh, I got chemo coming up on Thursday. So but I'm still feeling pretty good, a little bit raspy. <clears throat> just got to be careful of uh, pushing myself too far. But I don't know if you guys remember when I got back from the hot, I ordered this 
when I was in the hospital. And when I ordered it, it looked like the pictures were like this. One picture that way and one picture that way. Boom and boom. Then when I got home and opened up the package, both of the blades didn't seat down in there. So what I had to do for the main blade is pretty much grind off the whole kick. There's the, um, the queen stamp for 1932 to 55, I believe, which it was the, um, the first queen knives built in the Shat Morgan building factory, I should say. Oh, I gotta slow down and relax. I'm getting winded. But look at this beautiful bone. Look at that. So you guys can understand why I wanted to get this ready for carry, for pocket carry. So I ground this all the way down, took a lot off because it was sitting up probably about that high so not only did I have to grind the kick down <clears throat> I had to grind a little off the um, top of the blade so now what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see a lot of room where this blade could be a lot longer and probably was in its beginning but still back then the um, handle to blade ratio was always, um, I shouldn't say always, it's kind of like never say never. Um, but m uh, on most of the knives back in that day, the handle, um, handle ratio to blade length, handle length to blade length ratio, um, was always a little bit bigger on the handle side <clears throat> and here I can show you that by let's put this down for a minute excuse me guys I know I, I didn't uh, rehearse for this and I'm getting winded pretty quick um, I pulled this out this is was built in 2014 it's a Shat and Morgan Heritage Series knife, but it's made to scale um, from a 1902. And this here will, this knife will be highlighted in the Shat and Morgan story that I do coming up. Um, that's going to be about a 20, 25 minute video, which I probably won't be able to get through. But I just seen one of these go for two hundred and twenty-five dollars, which I didn't pay. I think I paid one hundred and twenty for this. But you'll see that the <clears throat> blade to handle ratio, and like I say, this was built to scale from the nineteen oh two model, and you'll see the handle's much bigger, with a nice compact blade. To do a lot of good detail work so you got that and you'll see there's a lot of room here left where they could have made the blade much longer the, the handles where the handles longer than the blade and if you do that same thing here match them up You can see that there's still, if I stop shaking here, there's still probably an eighth of an inch gone on this old queen. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's a little stubby blade. I put an edge on it. Um, what kind of upset me a little bit is I should have taped off the caps. Because I had to polish up this bone a little bit. I should have taped up the caps because they got a little too shiny compared to the blade. See what I mean? And here if you look at the secondary blade. 
it's almost like a harness jack where they have the awl instead of the blade. All right, guys, I'm getting gassed out here. Um, so we'll do the changing of the guard. Oh, here, let me show you one more thing. The reason why I think that this is so attractive is um, this probably was a bone color. Um, GEC tries to reproduce it, and they probably do the best job. What they call is antique bone. So I pulled this out. This is was a gift from um, Andy King. And if you look at it, you can see how they, um, just the way they dyed it. It's called a smooth white antique bone, I think. I'll have to look at the cap or on the um, tube. <sighs> Man, getting gassed out here. So, but anyway, you can see here's one that's kind of, uh, I mean, as gorgeous as it is with a beautiful polish, it's trying to replicate an or a true antique bone, which is on the queen. So anyway, I spent a couple hours doing that. Uh, they have me on an oxygen tank right now, and that's why I'm getting gassed. So we're going to do the changing of the guard, and then I'm going to get back onto the oxygen tank. Don't worry about it, guys. I mean, I'm doing great. I'm feeling good. I just caught a cold with um, being someone on chemo, uh, catching just something like a normal um everyday winter cold it can be a little bit dangerous so we have that we have this will be a kind of a tuesday teaser because i still want to do a full video on this this was um a gift from andy and not only was it a cool gift he found a way to get it to hand delivered to my house before I went to the hospital, but I was still sick. Um, so anyway, there's, I'll show you a little bit of that, a little Tuesday teaser. I'll be doing the Shanton Morgan story someday. Um, do a full video on this someday. And I think we did enough on this, didn't we? You guys satisfied with looking at that? Like I said, next time I polish the bone on, on one of these older knives, I think I'm going to tape off the caps because um, I lost probably, let's see, let's just say this was made in 1940. There would be 60, 83 years of tarnish that I just removed from the end caps which is a little disappointing, but, um, you know, I had to get a little polish on the bone because the bone is the highlight of this knife. And yes, I'm going to carry it. And here we go. We'll go over to here. Um, like I said, this has been my right pocket carry for the past week and I'm still staying with that. Um, Let's go over here, push this off to the side, and here's what we call the changing of the guard. I'm going to pull out, this is a GEC Stag gun stock, two blade, one of my favorite users of all time. And we're going to switch it with the Queen Teardrop Jack in an antique, smooth antique bone. And there you have it, folks. Put that over there. We'll get the watch or pocket watch back on it. And I got better get to that oxygen tank. <coughs> Excuse me. So, there's some little Tuesday teaser, and there's...
There's my carry for tomorrow. Till next time, my friends. Take care. Peace. Bye-bye.